thank you all for coming today. Uh, it is a pleasure for me. I feel blessed to be here today. And to explain a little bit about my work, I need to give you a little bit of context. I think it's important, especially uh, since I have been um, involved in so many different projects that are obviously the, the base for who I am today. Uh, I have to start first mentioning uh, the Grupo Los Carpinteros, which I was part of uh, for 12 years of my life. And it, it has been a very uh, important moment uh, in my art career. And secondly, I have to mention one uh, experience that I had in 1990, uh, led by my professor and colleague, René Francisco Rodriguez, uh, when we uh, participated in the project La Casa Nacional, the National House, back in 1990. Uh, I have to mention this second uh, experience because for me, it's a fundamental base of uh, my career in general, especially because I was uh, at the time involved in, in knowing that art is more than what we or at least that I knew at the time, and involve uh, uh, a complicity. It is also a moment when I learned that uh, art is about a confrontation. And specifically, I have to say that because uh, at that time, when René took us to this uh, national house in, in Old Havana, the idea was specifically uh, to interact with the uh, the neighbors of this building where we were working with them. The idea initially was uh, to supply them with a few things that they need and obviously at the beginning they were asking for things that they really need like a toilet or a, a refrigerator, things like that. Obviously things that we were not able to afford. Instead we were able to afford things like painting their walls, uh, providing a cabinet for keeping their food, things like that. And for me, obviously, that first experience uh, marked a, 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 a very definitive moment in who I am today. Especially because when you understand that art is about uh, that interaction and that confrontation and to understand uh, uh, a specific context as a set of different kind of rules and how to evolve from there. At the time, I remember that René introduced us to the philosopher Luigi Parison, who uh, talks about the theory of formation, la teoría de la formatividad, which I think is, is this moment in which um, uh, you understand that obviously art is not a set of rules that are fixed, but instead of a set of rules that are about to evolve. And since I uh, understood that since the beginning, and later with Los Carpinteros, I tried to expand that idea, obviously, uh, especially challenging the notion of authorship uh, and now talking about uh, three voices as one. Uh, then after obviously 13 years or 12 years of working uh, uh, with Los Carpinteros, there is a moment in which I want to continue expanding that notion of what is to work in different contexts, of what is to uh, challenge a different uh, moment. Uh, uh, and in this case, obviously, you start dealing with galleries, museums, uh, you know, public spaces. And for me, uh, 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 once that I departed from Los Carpinteros, I wanted to address issues that come from that first moment with René Francisco, and specifically the idea of the social sculpture that is uh, uh, something that I would like to start uh, uh, with. Uh, that is my first work after I left Los Carpinteros. So, sweat which is this first uh, project that, I, uh, that opens my uh, career as a solo artist. Uh, my intention was to involve uh, uh, several elements that conform uh, this specific context. My idea, to make, to make it briefly, because I only have 15 minutes and I have a bunch of uh, slides here to show you, show that game using, obviously, the sound, the voices, the screaming of the, of the, of the young guys playing basketball, and to project this image, what, what I invite the regular crowd of, of the art uh, to, pers uh, to witness this, this game. Obviously, when you arrive to basketball court, you see or you hear uh, players playing, you know, people screaming and the ball getting into the hoop. 
but the, you don't see the, the players. The players are there too, but they are now the public. And obviously the public is continuing to be the public. And then I invite obviously institution, our institution to also be part of this game. The idea fundamentally was to be, a, to witness a game that you barely can change because the result is already set, you know. So this is, the, the, for me, what is important about this specific project is to introduce my, uh, uh, my, my new point of view toward the idea of this social sculpture inspired by René Francisco and obviously by Joseph Boyce. Then, uh, secondly, uh, since I uh, more and more get involved with the idea how a context they variate and how to, uh, you know, how to deal with this new context, uh, it was for me important to address the issues of surveillance. And definitely surveillance is, some, is, a, is an issue that is a very old issue, but in Cuba we all know how surveillance was uh, working, you know, was the neighborhood was watching you all the time. But here, obviously, I have this element of the camera that is something very, is more commonly understood by, the, by everybody, that for me worked very well. And in this case, I uh, built this piece, which is the Garden of Mistrust. It was a very difficult time. I wasn't able to come to the States, and I have for the first time to produce my first work from afar, meaning that I have to trust people, especially in Los Angeles, with the help of Jose Raul Alonso, specifically from Miami, very good, very good dear old friend, who helped to uh, produce this uh, specific work. Uh, the Garden of Mistrust, uh, you know, I, I have to work this piece for the first time from afar, like I just said, but also it, it somehow it, it, it becomes part of the work as well. Because for me, the idea was to control this tree from afar. Obviously, without internet in Havana, I can do nothing. But I have to wait five years after uh, to uh, really confront the piece and, and to see the, fifth, the piece for the first time and really start working on that piece the way I conceived the piece, the piece in the beginning. To continue, uh, we all were this perpetual free entrance that was produced in 2006 in Spain. For me, it's one of those uh, uh, works that are very important and, and start to define a, a very important moment in my career, especially because for the first time I tried to involve the context of the museum in, uh, and, and be part of my, my work. In this case, I set uh, uh, several cameras in front of the entrance of the museum and I was recording people entering to the museum for several days. After that period of time, I uh, edited that information and put it in these uh, uh, entrances or boxes of this uh, sort of a stadium. The idea was obviously uh, uh, to contemplate all the people that was not possible, possibly able to see my work, to be part of the work even if they don't visit my work. So, and also there is this moment in which, uh, you know, you enter through that door to the, to the chapel, this beautiful chapel from 15th or 13th century, amazing. Uh, and you don't see anything, you only hear some sort of a hum, you know. But when you are in front of the stadium, then you, conf you confront the piece, but you also see that you are the center of attention. You are the actor who makes things work. And, and that for me what is important. Then I uh, continue my, my investigation, and obviously I have started to travel more often. I, I'm uh, already living in Spain, but traveling all over Europe, coming to the States also. And definitely, I, well definitely, this is not supposed to be like that, but anyway, I, uh, I, have, this, uh, uh, I have this seduction to collect a small amounts of debris from everywhere I go. I don't know why, but then at some point I have accumulated a pile of, of dust and debris from different places of the world, and what I have to do with this. And then I come up with this idea of dust, which is this uh, series of punching bags that contain these uh, little amounts of dust and they have also the inscription that says where this dust comes from. And for me, it was important and specific to this piece because you can understand all the, 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 the places where I have been and what, why they are meaningful to me and to build a context that is larger than what I have uh, conceived initially, now a context that is, 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 is larger and bigger and obviously 
to uh, to have access to uh, to these uh, the, the breeder of dust, you have to break the punching bags. Obviously, there are tons of uh, stories behind these punching bags, especially with collectors, how difficult they are to collect. Specifically, that they can be I mean they can break easily, and they have broken uh, in fire. For for example, to mention the fire that happened to to the collector in, in Washington, Peggy uh, uh, Cooper Caffritz. And you know, once that I was told about this story, I was tempted to collect what happened there. But obviously, it's too sad to deal with this type of situation. Then in 2008, um, I did this project, which is uh, the, the Mississippi bucket uh, that was built with the, uh, wood recovered from the Mississippi, Mississippi River itself. I have um, uh, Pregón, which is, I don't have to mention what Pregón is for Cuban, but anyway, it's, uh, it's a piece that tries to convey the two elements of the public and the pianist all together in one, one piece. Then I have this piece, which is for me very important and very meaningful, especially, especially because I brought to Havana this project, uh, the 10th Havana Biennial, which is to uh, bring the idea of the, uh, the, the Dow Jones. No one in Havana is familiar with the Dow Jones, what it is. And for me, it was important to address these issues, especially because as a, as a nation, we need to evolve and we need to address new issues. And my idea specifically was to create this piece in which the Dow Jones will be uh, 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 read it as this piece. It will be contracted or expanded depending on how, John, that, how the Dow Jones is during the day. When it goes up or down, the piece will reflect that uh, moment, when it contracting or expanding. I'm going to jump. <laughs> because I have oh, five minutes. Uh, well, uh, this is uh, uh, Times Square in New York. Uh, this is um, uh, Black Sun, very controversial piece. Uh, I have here um, uh, architectural elements. I have a uh, white corner, a very symbolic piece for me. This is a long story. I can't tell you this after. I have two colleagues waiting for me. Um, I have um, 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 Orange Street, my piece that I presented at the, at the Venice Biennial in 2011. The work with bridges, especially bridges that have, uh, doesn't exist anymore, no longer, so I tried to rebuild them again. Then I have this opportunity, this amazing opportunity of creating the project of, for Park Avenue in 2013, one of the landmarks of my art career my dialogue with uh, the city of New York, which for me is always that I've been wishing all my life, and finally that moment arrived, and I was able to produce this series with the help of the Gallery Magna Metz in New York. And uh, these are a, a series of 10 uh, large uh, projects. Uh, they, uh, but I have this new project that I did uh, uh, last year in New York, the map and the fact, and here I try to convey new ideas in which what is the macro world and the micro world, and to do the opposite with them. You know, the map become you know the map for me, which is the drawing, becomes that first moment of uh, of, of an idea, and the sculpture as the result of that first uh, watercolor. But I want to do the opposite in terms of like making larger that detail that represents the the the, the cloud field and the watercolor being reduced even when it's uh, large. I want to jump quickly to the last project I have done in this uh, uh, month in Coachella. Uh, for me, an amazing experience, obviously. And here I started a dialogue that is definitely larger and more complicated, but involves uh, uh, ideas that are now being seen by a larger crowd. And that way, I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't thought of this in, uh, before, and definitely I'm, I'm starting to like it because it's uh, it's a way to communicate ideas to a broader audience, especially young audience, and bring ideas. For instance, like the Katrina chairs uh, that uh, talks about the, the the disaster that was uh, Katrina. I mean, uh, New Orleans during the Katrina storm uh, in 2005. Uh, I wish I could have more time, but this is all. <laughs> Thank you.